Well, hello. Are we getting a peek at Janet Snakehole's diary? Echo, 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 echo. Are you ready? Vision goes walkabout late 2025. Penguin production postponed. Wah, wah, wah. All this and more on Comically Inclined Live. Welcome to Comically Inclined! I am Danny Stewart, Editor-in-Chief of ComicallyInclined.com and your host for this show. And I am Blake Hickman, the Digital Media Director. And I am Deontay the Giant, the Nerd Prime Minister. I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Slushhead Tommy. I'm just your what local up? artist, man. <laughs> what up, Tommy? It's good to have you here. It's good uh, to be here. I love the Saturday. <laughs> yeah. One of the Saturday Night Nerds. Uh, happy to have you on the show. Uh, good. Good to be here, man. Good. Good to have you. So we were. Um, what were we talking about before we uh, started the show? Uh, Agents of Shield uh, oh. and, and Canon and stuff. Uh, you know, oh. back and forth whether you're going to do it or not, and if they go ahead and go back with saying it's Canon, which it really should be, because I mean, honestly, it intertwines episodes Agent Carter or Dominic Cooper and Haley Atwell. I mean, that just goes all of those two uh, shows go hand in hand, canon wise. And like, even though Inhumans, you know, yeah. cool, scratch <laughs> that one off. We don't. Work, we will be glad to pretend it never happened. But, but don't, don't let that affect these other shows. They don't deserve that. That's and what they, they get no. for trying to replace the X-Men with the Inhumans. That's yeah. That's Ike Trollmutter, <sighs> man. And on an ABC <laughs> level, TV series level, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, Billy Rhodes, that. praise be Galactic Overlord Xenu, a new episode of my favorite podcast. Thank you, Billy. Aww. Uh, we love you. Glad you're in the comments. Speaking of, our human relations specialist and fact checker extraordinaire, Ben Stewart, should be dropping into the comments any second now guys <laughs> we have an incredible show for you tonight uh, we do. um we are talking top five iron man armors yes. um that's i think that's going to be fun we've already um kind of ran through the picks and uh, they look pretty good um and then there is some uh some news with the flash let's talk about that a little bit um and uh before we get into all of that blake you want to give us some news Let's fire up the rumor mill. So, first thing we uh, have Aubrey Plaza teases us with a little Instagram pic. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first pic, and it's not really on set, but it is on set, but it's behind the scenes on set. Uh, of the back of her uh, chair, she sits in. And it says the Darko Diaries, and it's uh, actually m patterned after the Princess Diaries, exact same font and style and everything. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm not really sure where that might lead to. Is that just a little fun thing for them to sit in in the back? Or, you know, are we actually going to get like a some kind of little segment or some kind of, I don't know. It, there's not, we don't know anything about it, but we do. It's the first time we've seen it and heard of the Darko Diaries. So it's interesting to see where that might lead to or what they might be doing with that story. So Darko is in Donnie Darko? No, like Dark, dark Hole. Dark oh, Dark Hole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I would I would assume it's it's like a tongue in cheek like working title, uh, right. as opposed to anything actually being used in the series. Yeah. Right. But you, you never know because with Wandavision, you know, they got so creative outside the box where we got these little uh, commercials, you know, and stuff That's like true. that. Yeah. So there's no telling where they might be even getting more creative and doing something similar with that. It may, wouldn't that be kind of neat, though, if they did like a deal where we're doing uh, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, we're watching it. And then in each episode, there's just a little like minute and a half insert Darko Diary story. And it shows it to us and then it goes right back to, you know, what the story was or something like that. That would be pretty neat. That, that would be fun. It, it would almost be like they were copying Watchmen with the the storyline running through it with the pirates. Uh, I forget the name of it. Tommy, do you remember it? Uh, 
Black Freighter. The story of the Black yes, Freighter. Yes, the story of the Black Freighter. So in the Watchmen comics, uh, it was the uh, it was written by one of the uh, the artists or writers that gets taken away to that island where they're sitting there and they're trying to. I don't want to spoil the the story, but you know they're sitting there and they're I trying think to the figure ship out. Was sailed on spoiling Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love the ending so much because like you see what the artists and the writers were all building up to, and it's that gigantic psychic alien creature that we see that kills the millions of people in new york and i the the story of the black freighter going along coin coinciding with it i think that'd be really cool to see someone take that idea and kind of meld it in with like you know because I, I assume we're talking about this agatha harkness show that that's right. supposed to yes. be coming. covenant of chaos what, what would be neat yeah. is if that's actually so too, like I, I would like to see something that's similar to that, that would, i think that would be a really cool concept yeah, it would be neat if they went ahead and took a like per spill out because this was a book full of spills, right? Yep. yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so what if they actually took an insert of per spill and like give you like a minute and a half, two minute little deal about how that spill was created or or the story behind that spill? And so they gave us uh, info and education on the dark code since we're seeing it so much, and it just gets us that much deeper dive into the education and background of the story. I can dig that. I think it'd be cool if they did something that was like the commercials kind of like that, like right before the commercial happening. Because like almost like, you know, how anime transitions happen where it'll be the story. And then right before the commercial will happen, they'll slap a like a title card on the screen and it'll say whatever is on the screen. And I know there's certain ones that will have like stats of like characters or whatever on them. Attack on Titan is good. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And then they'll come back after the commercial and you'll see the other side of it. So I think that'd be pretty cool if they brought back the concept of the commercials from WandaVision mm -hmm. and maybe found a way to meld them in with that so that we could see those transitions. Uh, ben, you yeah. weren't in the chat whenever I acknowledged you originally, <laughs> but I'm glad you're here now. Uh, human relations <laughs> specialist and fact checker extraordinaire Ben is now in the comments. Uh, <laughs> he has arrived, everyone. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, Tommy, I think that that I, I think that would be really cool. Just like a, a dark hole spell, the information about it, whatever, and then switch over to the commercials. Yeah, that, that would be cool. I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. They, right. should, they, they should just hire us to write this. I mean, yeah, what the hell are they even doing? Like, Come this is the writer's on, room right here. You know? Right. <sighs> and we're not going to go on strike. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can get better benefits and more money. I might. I might go on strike. But anyway. Uh, next on the list, so Ironheart, our release was supposed to be the end of 2023. This has nothing to do with the picketers or nothing like that, but uh, because, you know, Kevin Feige's kind of listening to the fans and, you know, they're dialing back uh, on the TV, Disney Plus rollouts and the movies, and they're wanting to focus more on quality and making sure they're delivering the same kind of, you know, cinematic uh, uh, experience that we're, we're wanting on, on the quality, on top quality. So uh, they said that this is kind of one of the reasons it got pushed back to 2024. I think they're going to, you know, kind of revisit it, refocus, and make sure there's nothing else that they need to add into it, or maybe, you know, restructure. Uh, so that that got moved back to 2024, and we don't know a month. So is that the same year that Armor Wars is coming out? Uh, when is Armor Wars coming out? It's like 2024. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Ben. <laughs> <laughs> or 2025. Oh, my, my Hill Bizzle. brother, my Hill brother Taylor Burton is in the house. Hell yeah, man. Taylor Burton, the sexy mountain man himself, has joined the chat. Taylor, I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> and all that stuff Blake said, too. <laughs> uh, oh, we finally get a final release date of Loki, down to the date. October 6th of this year, we are getting season two. No mm. more guessing, no more you know, trying to figure out when it should be or where we think it fits in perfectly. We have a set in stone date. So Absolutely. super excited for that. I think it's going to be phenomenal season just like the first one was because to date of the disney plus series on the mcu loki is my number one pick absolutely i, I think they did great with it couldn't have I so ben says 2024 is when we can expect armor wars to drop so yeah it's the same year okay so y'all think the story between iron heart and uh armor wars might be connected in the mcu i think uh, it would have to be Considering I, I think that he, Tony Stark is gone. I mean, like, with Tony Stark being gone, the original Armor Wars was someone stealing Tony's right. tech and yeah. him needing to get it back from them, you know? So I, I think that it would be cool to see them hint back at Tony Stark. Right. Most yeah. definitely, like, going back and being, like, you know, them coming across Stark's uh, 
equipment and things like that. And then having Ironheart be the one dealing with the with the main conflict. I would like to see yeah. her be in in the place of Tony Stark. So what I, I would like, like to see being Rhodey. What what I'd like to see is they do Armor Wars before Ironheart. Mm-hmm. And we, we see the Armor Wars story where at the end of the, the season, you know, the, the right people get back a hold of Stark Tech. Because you know the Armor Wars is supposed to be about the battle between Stark losing all of his equipment because it's in the hands of the government now. So I'd love to see that first. They literally sit there and get a hold back of the technology and the tech that he has. And then we get Ironheart and we see Riri taking over Iron Man's legacy. And she's kind of leading over all of his tech and maybe new inventions. And then we get that tech versus magic, you know, through her season while she's also kind of taking over the Stark's throne, maybe. I think that would be pretty neat. I also hope we still get the AI Tony Stark being the the uh, yes Friday to, to Ironheart. Riri. Yes. Yeah, for Riri. I hope that we get that. I hope that Robert Downey Jr. reprises his role. I hope that we do see him. You know, he wouldn't have to put the armor on, and he basically just shows up and does the scenes and then goes home. So right. Um, I, I hope that that happens. I think that's a brilliant idea, and it would still give us that love and nostalgia of Tony that everybody still craves. I think it'd be pretty cool if they made him be like the AI as opposed to right. being like, you know, like how Jarvis was and all that. Just don't even have him like show up, have him be like the AI. The and then maybe do like a hologram of him or something. Yeah, that's, like what, that. that's what I was saying. Because yeah. that's what it so was like, in I, Ironheart. Right. So I, I'd like that. Yeah. So, uh, let's yeah. see. I'm sorry. I was reading Ben's deal. Beta Ray Burton. <laughs> Beta Ray yeah, Burton. Maybe Ray Burton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Congratulations, Taylor. Uh, he's sure. recently learned that he is expecting. And uh, I'm I'm excited to meet Danny or Danielle Burton whenever they come along. <laughs> whichever well, one you go I, with. I, I, I think Danielle Blake Burton is a, is a great name. Ooh. Yeah, Danny Blake Burton or Danielle Blake Burton. It, just, got, it yeah. just rolls off the tongue really smooth. Yeah, Blake for a girl, I think, is a really good choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's gender. Hey, I, I actually was named after a female. So, yeah. Like <laughs> some, some, some characters, or whatever. I don't know. They're like, oh, they can go both ways. I'm like, well, just the name. So. <laughs> Blake oh, Lively, <laughs> Danny Burton, it is. <laughs> Danny Blake Burton. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next on the list. Uh, so, first time ever getting a historic binge release for the MCU. Echo is releasing November 29th, and they are releasing all six episodes at one time. Yes. And the only thing that uh, the MCU Disney Plus series has done that with is Groot, which is just like five, what, eight minute shorts. So I wouldn't even really count that. But even this, these are way longer episodes, more episodes, but one complete release. And I'm happy about that. Oh, my God. Absolutely. What up, Ken Pachi? Thanks for dropping into the chat. Uh, bro, the the all six episodes at once is like, what were they like? Let's get this done so we can move on to Daredevil. <laughs> Man, ruthless. Oh, my Cause, God. Because you know they're not going to do that with all 18 episodes. Yeah. Oh. No. Absolutely not. I, I did like how Netflix released the episodes in uh, for Punisher and all the other shows, but Disney Plus probably needs to take their time with this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <That's talking laughs> <about. laughs> she hulk was probably so bad because it was written by a. Tommy, how'd you feel about She-Hulk? <laughs> Who? Tommy, how'd you feel about oh. She-Hulk? About She-Hulk? I, I enjoyed the humor in it. Like, I, I don't like how I felt about She Hulk was that it felt like what John Byrne was doing with the character, where it was just, it was supposed to be fun. It wasn't supposed to take itself serious, and it wasn't supposed to be like this whole big changing thing. And that's that's kind of why like I like Guardians too, is that Guardians doesn't change anything for the for the MCU. All it does is that it, the story itself is just a minuscule story about saving Rocket's life. If you take it out of its base form, that's all it is. So if you look at She-Hulk and you're just like, it's a comedy show, that's what it feels like. And, you know, it's a show, too. Like, I don't expect to see the high-end CGI. I don't expect to see the big, like, exciting things that we're supposed to see in the movies. You know, I want them to save that for the movies. I think that's the whole point of the movies being there. You know, I think that the shows are supposed to give us the insight to everything else that's happening in the MCU, while the movies are supposed to be the big cataclysmic events that are supposed to be going on. But then again, we have like 
like I said, Guardians 3, where it's just a small story about them trying to save Rocket. So that, that's how I felt about She-Hulk. I felt like She-Hulk was, I don't think it was bad, but I don't think that like it was something that was supposed to be top of the line. I think it was just supposed to be something that we're supposed to laugh at and enjoy. And I think everybody took it too seriously when it came out. Everybody wanted it to be something serious. Right. Yeah. And they, they, I think that people missed the mark as to what uh, She-Hulk is really like, you know? And then like, it's the same with the Adam Warlock. A lot of people have a problem with Adam Warlock in this recent movie. I'm, I feel like Adam Warlock was portrayed probably some like one of the best portrayals that we've gotten and the reason being is because he's he was just born he was literally they say that he just came out of the cocoon too so, early actually yeah, yeah and then too like early and they explain <laughs> even in the comics that like he's not supposed to go out of the cocoon early like the, like in the fantastic four issue that he's uh you have alicia and she's the only one that's able to see him as he's well alicia who is a uh, ben grimm's significant other the one that is blind uh she's in some other dimension and she comes across the the sound of him before adam warlock was him before he was adam warlock and it draws her in because she's the only one that's not like evil or mean and he can tell that but he's very naive with it and he doesn't he you can tell that he's not a full thought completely you know and that and that's what i liked about adam warlock in the movie so i think that these are portrayals that are comic accurate, but people are just, they, they think that everything needs to be serious when it comes to the MCU. And I, I think that's, that's where I'm just like, I, I want to see some comedy too. You know, right. comics aren't supposed to be just all action. You know, they're supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be sad. They're supposed to be ups and downs, you know, they're reflections of our own lives. So that's, that's what I want to see in the Marvel stuff. And I, I, I think, they were getting a little too heavy with the comedy stuff, but I don't think that that diminishes the movies that are there. I think that they just need to find that balance once again, you know, that they had in the early films because there was always comedy in those films. Like you can see it in the Thor movie. You can see it in the Iron Man movie. Yeah. There's always some little snippet of humor in it. Well, so yeah, even with the, uh, even with Avengers two, age of Ultron, when they did the like, Steve said a potty word. <laughs> like, exactly. so, like, I don't understand why everybody is so upset with it being comedic. I can understand if it's too comedic, but right. I, I, I just think that, like, they're, that they're a, a their strong way. divide in our in our group be, over Thor four. So um, I, I would rather no, I see She Hulk. I would rather I would rather see She Hulk than Thor: Love and Thunder. So, and because because She Hulk was marketed to like I mean like y'all said it was marketed to be a light hearted law comedy. Uh, and then, you know, I didn't know a lot of stuff about the comics until, you know, Danny explained a lot of it to me. But uh, I don't know. I, I think there's stuff that could be worked on or whatever. But I, so it's not I'd rather watch that the Thor Love and Thunder because that's where they went over <laughs> over past the fence that they should have yeah. on, on a good balance. See, that one I skipped. I didn't see that. One. That <laughs> was like it's like Captain Marvel and Black Widow. It was just one of those movies. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can move. I can live on without seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I like Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow's good. I yeah. um uh, I liked Love and Thunder for what it was. It it very much was um uh and I don't want to get on a soapbox about that, but it was very much what was going on in the Thor comics in the last couple of years. It was very similar uh storytelling wise, everything. So I, I enjoyed it, but um, anyway, Blake, why don't we move on to the next piece of news you got there? <laughs> yeah, so Seth Rollins of the WWE, for all you wrestling fans, is spotted in a production set for Cap 4 as a villain. He's in some kind of garb that nobody still knows what his uh, character is supposed to be, but they're thinking that he might be part of the Serpent Society because mm. Bow, they're supposed to be confer confirmed ish rumors, uh, if that makes sense, that you know the storyline is Bow is working with this group. Not the group she's creating, but she's working with this other group, searching out a metal that is not vibranium on Earth. And <laughs> can it be adamantium? I mean, mm. what could it be? But uh, so, yeah, the, the rumor, though, is she's supposed to be working with the Serpent Society. So now people are wondering if, you know, by his garb that he's wearing and those rumors of the Serpent Society, if he might be a member of the Serpent Society she's working with. So, yep. Uh, Danny, you being a wrestling fan, you know who Seth Rollins is? I know who Seth Rollins is. I'm a, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that he's definitely a hundred percent Omega red. 
Mm. But yeah, this is it. This is the this is Ben's moment in the sun. This is whenever Omega Red finally makes it into the MCU. It's gonna be Seth Rollins playing him. Uh, terrible Russian accent and all. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Uh, see, uh, Echo Store. A lot of- Right, so do you? I, I, maybe I missed it, but do you also have uh, somewhere on your rumor mill the the new Captain America costume? The new Captain America costume? No. Yes. So in those images that were leaked of Seth Rollins on set, uh, it also there was also images of um, of the Falcon Cap in a new costume, and it's How closer. It it's closer to like the um, the Winter Soldier Captain America costume. The one he's wearing at the beginning as the Agent of Shield. Yeah. It's it's a dark blue. It's got the um the star on the chest and the red highlights from uh what was probably closer to uh um uh uh endgame maybe um mm-hmm. but man it looks it looks good they got rid of a, like all the white that was on the cool. top of the costume. I know they pre- I know that when they first debuted the first costume of Falcon Winter Soldier that was like almost spot on comic accurate wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> so with very few changes, it was it was very close to the comic book. Nice. nice. But yeah, I have to so, look that up. But yeah, I didn't come across that. Yeah, so Sam Wilson is getting a new uh, a new costume for this, and it's a little it's a little more reserved. It's a little more like just blue. Uh, a little more, a little more, <laughs> little, time. a little more stealthy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know, so of course I had to start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, boom, are you looking for this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Echo Celebrity, our character, uh, Aleko Fox, she is pregnant. So hopefully she's got all her uh, action scenes done and everything for Echo. Which I think that's pretty much all done filming, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, she is uh, pregnant with their first child, if I'm not mistaken. So, Billy, to answer your question, no, uh, it does not have a full helmet. It's still the, um, still goggles. the like facial, the goggles and the one like face band. Uh, congratulations on the baby. The baby's all around. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad that she's done filming. I would hate for Echo to have to do all of their action scenes holding a large uh, purse. <laughs> or uh, you know, always standing next to a counter. Yeah, yeah. Behind it. <laughs> yeah. Or duck behind a couch. You know, just all the classic <laughs> sitcom ways they hide pregnancy. <laughs> uh, see, MCU uh, cast is 18th uh, Game of Thrones actor uh, Richard Dormer as Agent Prescott uh, in Secret Invasion. So uh, yeah, they're getting pretty hot and heavy on that uh, Game of Thrones cast, man. 18th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You seeing favoritism there at all, or what? So. <laughs> Dude, only that they cast an incredible group of people for Game of Thrones, yeah. and they'd be mm-hmm. crazy not to take them and fold them into the MCU. That's and R- Richard Dormer played in Game of Thrones. Uh, Beric Dondarrion is that how you say that? I believe. Yeah, so, Beric Don- Beric Dondarrion. Yep. So, in case anybody's wondering exactly who who he played. So yes, Billy, <laughs> his skull is exposed. <laughs> so he can shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see next on the list uh we get a little bit more of an idea on a release date window for vision quest it's going to be late 2025 or early 2026 yeah. uh i'm super excited for this i'm not really sure which route they're going to go uh I, I really like the idea of the rumors we've heard where vision's going you know going to be kind of taking some younger younger people with powers and kind of molding them into you know what they need to be and, and kind of creating a group himself of, I don't know if it's going to be the Young Avengers or they're going to call it something else, but uh, I, I think it'd be great uh, to, to see the series. I'm ready for us to see more Vision. Uh, it's been a minute since we got to see him, and, I, and I'm really curious what he's out there doing. Yeah, Paul Bethany was a great cast uh, to, to be Vision. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. For yeah. sure. He's. He, I couldn't imagine the voice of Vision being anyone else. Um, yeah. Or Jarvis. Um, yeah, or Jarvis. Yeah. I would say, you know, what would be real fun is if we got a Wonder Man, uh, Vision, like buddy cop, uh, <laughs> a roadshow adventure akin to um, uh, Green Arrow and Green Lantern in the seventies, like just traveling across the country, solving crimes and living their lives and having a great time. Well, it would be a, uh, let it be about Vision and him, and be like a. Let it be a comedy and kind of style it after the other guys. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a good one. 
Yeah. Let, let, go ahead and let them do I'm it. I'm telling oh. you guys, this is the writer's room right here. Yeah. <laughs> and it, instead, of there being, instead of there being the office pop, let it be the yeah. office blast out, out of the stone <laughs> or something. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody does it, man. Dude, <laughs> do you think there are so many, there are so many um, Infinity Stones in the 616 um, outside of the ones that we got in Infinity War um, and the Infinity Gauntlet and all that. There are more stones um, that exist in the 616. I think there's a whole nother set, actually. And so Thanos destroyed the Infinity Stones. Do you think it's possible that we'll get another set of infinity stones and that they'll start like that's what adam warlock's headstone was that's what vision gets another one back like that could be I would sick, like to see them do the infinity watch yeah mm. if you could have like the infinity watch come in and it actually be the infinity watch that we've seen from the comics being like what is it like pip the troll and yep. all these weird characters that just that would just yeah i think it would be a good homage back to the comics and then it would it would show us that these infinity stones i think that we should also involve like the living tribunal and all these other characters that created these stones that way they can explain to us as the world like they did in infinity war that these stones cannot work all together and that they're only powerful by themselves and only one person can wield them at a time so i would like to see them do something like that yeah that would be cool i'd yeah, be down for that yes um, and I, I love, love how we that. got the thing in Ant Man three too, where we you know they're reduced to atoms, so we get to see the Infinity Stone characters. Uh, that that was pretty neat. I don't, I don't doubt they'll ever do anything else with that, but it was nice how they kind of stuck that there in the background. I just, I just don't right. want them to spend the rest of the time that we get MCU films ignoring the Infinity Stones and their powers because they destroyed them earlier. But like. Vision's powers are definitely based on an Infinity Stone. Like Adam Warlock's powers are definitely based mm. on an Infinity Stone. Like just the fact that we're just going to get them ignoring this for the next like thirty years yeah. pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> like we just need them brought back. We need something akin to the Infinity Stones. Call them something else. Call them the Eternity Stones. You know, I don't Ooh. care. <laughs> but are the Eternity I'll call Rocks. Them the infinity gems like they do in the comics yes. because they're not they're not stones in the comics they're gems they're right. they're actual like they're cut and look nice they're not just rocks that they just stick into the glove it's it's an actual gem yeah yeah wasn't the infinity stones a big part of secret wars anyway like dr doom had to get his hands on them or at some point the beyonder um, yeah dr doom uh yeah the infinity stones were part of that but i wish what they would do is just have earth stories and then have cosmic stories and then kind of maybe split it off in two that way we can get the cosmic side of marvel like we've seen with like guardians and like we've seen with right. like thor ragnarok where they're out in space and it's not an earth-based story i would like to see them do the just spin off rocks. going that way and then <laughs> earth stuff happening this way yeah yeah yeah, because I mean, we're going in so many different realms now the mystical realms, the cosmic realm, your earthly, you know, realms. I mean, they, they could easily do something like that, splitting up the sections. Uh, cool. Let's see. Dave Filoni finally announces the title of his Star Wars movie, Heir to the Empire, which yeah. is the, th the three, the, was that three book series where we get Thrawn, we get uh, Mara Jade. Uh, oh, what's another big character in there? Uh, Dark Luke. Was it Dark Luke in that? Isn't that whenever Dark Luke was brought around, the evil clone of Luke Skywalker? Uh, I, I don't know. Hey, Ben, check that out if you don't mind. I don't remember that. I've, I've read The Heir to the Empires, but it was back when I was like in middle school. Or, or, so it's been a minute since I read them. But I know that, like, I remember them being great books. Yeah. Do you think Filoni will get rid of Mara Jade? I, I know they have this thing know. with Legends characters. So I'm... Yeah. Well, I... It'd be hard to bring Mara Jade in yeah. and, and not have Luke recast, you know? Exactly. Or or, or some CGI work done. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> fine. They're bringing back Paul Walker for the next Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> Do it. Just, uh, man, just yeah, make young sure. Luke a CGI character and just call yeah. it a day. Yeah, Luke with two U's. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is how they spelled it. That was his name. Luke. Yeah. <laughs> the, the evil clone of Luke was Luke. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, Kylo Ren, he was based on like a real Legends character, wasn't he? He was 
uh ben, ben solo, solo. Yeah. yeah Ben Solo. So, so so like also what i would love to see this is they're going to the heir to the empire and i yeah. know i've said this a lot but let let us get jason and jana solo the twins but and they can still make this all super canon let them be like just maybe uh three or four years after ben was born and and or i don't know or maybe when he, after he was like 10 let them be born and they went and hid them somewhere to go across their journey to grow as jedi just okay. for a simple fact, they were scared to have him them around Ben because they were starting to sense stuff was the dark side, you know, and turmoil inside of him or something like that. And then, man, they can make such a good, successful, money making, fun to watch run, which is stories of the Jason and uh, Jaina solo uh, stories. Yeah, I heard they were pretty up there too. Like they, those are some powerful wins. Yeah, they're good. I mean, like if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I, I want to say there's like twelve books. I mean, and they like. They have stories of Lando Calrissian. I think uh, at one point IG88 is chasing them. Uh, so we actually, and once this, you know, I was IG11 that was in Mando. Uh, we everybody loved that. So now they can bring IG88 back up because he is canon, and we got to see a small clip of him. And let's get to see some more droid, you know, assassin stuff going on, bounty hunter stuff going on. Absolutely. Uh, but man, there's so much that they could do if they wanted to, and they could play, they could play, if they played the cards right. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with Burton. I think uh, to this day, uh, Disney's best CGI face was, oh, excuse me, Tarkin in Rogue One. <laughs> for sure. Oh, man. <laughs> he was Are great. you being serious? Yeah. So I finally watched, I watched Rogue One the other day, or last week. I watched it like two or three times when it first came out, and I haven't watched it since. And I don't know. I guess just because CGI every year is just constantly progressing. Like To me, Tarkin's face, now watching it again, is even more recognizable CGI than it was back then when it first came out. Um, yeah. So I was like, I was like, man, that's pretty good that they got that guy, out, you know, looking just like he did in the old ones. And then now it's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's not Scar Hulk level, you know, CGI bad. But <laughs> oh man, oh my god. But and, and it's not as bad as the first Luke and Mando that they brought brought out as well. <laughs> man, that was rough. Oh my god. Uh. Let's see. Next on the list, uh, Skeleton Crew, uh, which will have Jude Law, Star Wars show. We don't have a whole lot about the story is going to be about. You know, the picture that we got is uh, shows a ship, and it looks like it's kind of in an urban area on whatever planet it might be. Not been a lot of information leaked or released or rumored for uh, the storyline or where, where this is going to take. Uh, but we get an update release of November or December of this year that we will get that release to watch. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one, especially with us just not knowing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the picture showed like a ragtag bunch of uh, kids, and I think they are being led by a guy, and I, I don't know. That's all I know. So That's pretty dope. Yeah, and I'm really shocked with it coming out uh, November, December this year that we haven't got a lot more information released on it or, or anything or some leaks or something. Yeah, we've got more info on Ahsoka than we've gotten Skeleton Crew. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, I think just by the very name of Skeleton Crew, I'm assuming that it's some sort of a space adventure with a crew uh, yeah. that isn't, you know. I think I think it's like a rag. What they're doing? I think it's like a ragtag bunch of misfits type type thing. And hey, you know, if if Fox won't give us another season of Serenity or of uh, of uh, Firefly. Firefly. Firefly, if Fox won't give us another season of Firefly, they can just make a Star Wars version because that's what it sounds like <laughs> to me. It sounds like they're just making Firefly, but in the Star Wars universe. Which is your favorite show. I do love Firefly. They they could bring you on to write that. Yeah, it's a good show. (laughs) Uh, Let's see what else we got here on the list. Uh, Penguin Production. It's uh, halted for one day because of the WGA picketers. Uh, It's only for one day, so they're not, you know, obviously too, too scared. But if this keeps happening over and over and over, we might actually get to where the, you know, we're really getting a big delay on that. So we're not really sure how long this is going to go or how long it's going to last or what all the things it's going to affect. Because, uh, I mean, Pink was already written and they're in production of filming, but it actually stopped it. So, and that was a strike that did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. And, and honestly, with the tiny amount of money that Hollywood makes every year, there's just the minuscule amount that just skipping, skimming by. You're just, they're just barely making it. These people asking for just a little more money and, you know, better dental benefits. I can see it. Like I can see why Hollywood would want to hold out. You know, they, sure. they want to like get, get, get the line as low as possible, you know, get them, get them down to just, you know, accepting the lowest terms possible. That's uh, <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, blame them for why our entertainment isn't coming to us. 
<laughs> uh, which I know uh, there's uh, because of that as well. Mandalorian four season four is uh, definitely halted right now because they're in the middle of writing it. If I'm not, mm-hmm. No, it's, no, it's already written. I'm sorry. He he did tell us it was already written, but it has halted production on Man- uh, Mandalorian season four like drastically. Yeah. They said. Yeah. Well, we got enough Star Wars shit coming down the pipeline right now. I don't know that I'll yeah. I'll notice the lack of Mandalorian, right. uh, especially when I'm rewatching Ahsoka like every every couple of days. Uh, so we'll see. But um, <laughs> when, when, speaking of Ahsoka, real quick, when when is that release date? That's a great question that I don't have the answer to. <laughs> hey, bitch, look that up too. <laughs> Was that 2023 uh, at least? I think it is. Is it? Yeah, I believe it is coming this year. I want to say August, maybe. Yeah, I, don't know I think it, it is August. Today. August six. Yeah, I'm ready for that, man. I'm, yeah. I'm super pumped about that one. Um, I'm gonna watch Rebels before I get into that show for sure, dude. So, I'm telling you right now, I really, really, really need to watch Andor. Like, I have just been. I shit. I do too. I yeah, I've been putting it that. off. <laughs> Me too. Uh. So we actually are getting like a pretty heavily uh, rumored front runner now to play Superman. Yeah, scheduled for release Legacy. August twenty twenty three. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, so uh, David uh, Cornswit yep. is actually uh, rumored to be the main front runner, possibly right now for uh, Superman and Gun Superman Legacy. Uh, he's playing in We Own This City, Hollywood, uh, The Answers, so, some not nothing, nothing really big, big, which I think is a good thing. I, I think uh, he could take a, a slight no name, not bashing his uh, his business that he's done so far, but someone that not everybody's real familiar with. And looks wise, he's got the looks. He does. I don't know if y'all seen the, the pics of him, but I think he could definitely pull it off. I just don't know what his acting chops are like. But if Gunn does pick him, let's be honest, Gunn's pretty good at picking his characters. So he is. So this but, all yeah. started as like uh, I think the rumor even started because somebody said he looked like Henry Cavill. Like that's how the fan <laughs> casting started. Oh really? <laughs> yes. He, got, he does. Yeah. Just a little huh. bit. He looks like a younger Henry Cavill, and mm. um, but uh, James Gunn did say he's not necessarily looking for a giant yoked actor to play um, mm. Superman. He doesn't necessarily need them to look like they're just insanely shredded like henry cavill did what he's looking for is a character that can carry that like that kind of like happy smirk that uh christopher reeves had every time yeah. that he would save somebody or do something good and th- that told you that superman loved what he did he said that's the thing he's looking for the most mm-hmm. it gives off that essence of who the character embodies yeah and i think ben would make a great great superman he's the perfect height actually uh, in the comics, Superman is six foot five, and that is that is how tall Ben is. So he would be. Perfect. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Danny, you were telling me earlier that was it the director or the writer for the Flash who has not actually released anything on film for the trailers, but he had a sketch on his Instagram. That yeah. He so the Reverse Flash, the director for the Flash movie, in, put a sketch on Instagram. It was just a real quick, like hand drawn sketch of the Reverse Flash, and people are thinking that that is either an homage to the evil flash that young Barry is supposed to turn into or that um that reverse flash is actually going to be in the film and that they've just done a really good job of not showing him gotcha which if they're trying to stay canon to the dc comics reverse flash is who kills barry's mom absolutely right. he did it yeah. to mess with barry he traveled back in time and killed his mom to mess with barry and inadvertently created the flash <laughs> um, it's a, um, uh, what's that called? A, uh, uh, butterfly effect. No, mm. uh, uh, I'll think about it. Um, Flashpoint paradox. a paradox. Thank you. Oh, it is a oh, paradox okay. in that he, um, he went back in time to, uh, attack the flash and inadvertently created the flash. Uh, but if he hadn't done that, would Barry have ever become the flash? Gotcha. Uh, well, and plus, I mean, all, all the different versions of the Flash that we're seeing from the trailer, I mean, it would just make sense for them to have that in there. I mean, honestly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and this would probably be the one thing that they do not tease that will su- surprise us because they pretty much showed, once again, most of the movie, I feel like, in the trailers, as many different trailers have been dropped. So they've they've put a lot of the film out already. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. All they're missing is a Grant Gustin cameo, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, my son Wyatt, he's like begging for that Grant Gustin cameo because that's his favorite version of the Flash. Absolutely. Uh, last but not least on the list, uh, newest rumored star to play Lex Luthor in Superman Legacy is Nicholas Holt that played the Beast in uh, X Men First Class series that run we had. Uh, I, I, he's a great actor. I've seen him in quite a few different films, and I think he's very versatile. I really don't. I mean, not just many people you can just picture to play Lex, anyways. You know. But I think he could be, he could surprise us. And uh, I think he'd probably pull it off just because the guy's got the acting skills, you know, to, to play a lot of different roles. But that's kind of who's uh, also heavily rumored at the moment is uh, Nicholas Hope Felix. And that's for Superman Legacy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. Superman Legacy. He may be our Lex Luthor. Um, and I don't really think they have a lot of other people in the running for that one. I think there's, there's like mm-hmm. three people that they're considering for Superman. Uh, but I think there aren't really a lot of rumors for anybody else to be playing Lex. He's the only one that I've heard of so far. And, and, and then was in the past the, few days. Um, there's three people that are rumored to maybe be Lois Lane, and one of them is the girl from Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Yep. And I right. think she'd be a great Lois. Oh, yeah. I think she would, too. Mm-hmm. And people are talking about the age difference, but there's only like a three-year age difference between the actor for Superman and the actor <laughs> and her. So. Huh. <laughs> But y'all have anything to add that I might have missed that y'all heard this week? Uh, not for me. Yes. Uh, All I right. Do have, I do have one small question. Uh, as far as like Loki season two dropping this year, have you heard anything about like Jonathan Majors like getting his scene shot? For no, that? I mean I have it. Like they, I think the reason they pushed it back is in high hopes of how his you know situation in court might go. Because, you know, that was pushed back almost immediately after that accusation kind of happened. Yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty sure no matter what, they're not going to recast him at least for – I think it's been confirmed. No matter what, they're not going to recast him for Loki Season 2. They said it would just be too much effort and too much time, and it would push Loki Season 2 back almost a full year if they were actually to go that route. And yep. just because of the whole variant situation, they can still continue on the story if they decide to recast him later and still run with it, and it'll be okay. Because, Absolutely. I mean, we've got Victor Timely, you know, in the end of uh, Ant-Man 3. He's supposed to be, you know, in Loki Season 2. And it just would not match up no matter what this condition uh, scenario is if uh, they redid that. So, Yeah, so October, expect more Kang, uh, Jonathan Majors Kang. So yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. I'm, 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 I'm excited. So, man. And I think I have, I have a feeling, like, you know, I think season two, you know, season one is great. I think season two is going to trump season one. Absolutely. I really do. But, yeah, that's this week on Rumor Mill. These rumors have been milled. Well, Blake, um, that was a very fitting end to your rumor mill. I think that it suits you. And you know what? <laughs> A nice suit of Iron Man armor, which is mm. about for our top uh, five this week. <laughs> Welcome to top five. So this week we are talking top five Iron Man suits. Uh, this can be from the movies, from the comics, and hell, if there's a graphic novel or a novel that I'm not familiar with that you thought the suit was just so cool, please feel free to tell us all about it. I am excited. Blake Hickman, would you be so kind as to kick us off with your number five? I would love to. My number five is for sentimental reasons. Not necessarily it's the coolest armor or nothing like that, but it was the first Iron Man suit that I had a uh, collection uh, to add to my collection of toys or collectibles or whatever you want to call them. Uh, So, yeah, Iron Man. Yeah, action figures, collectibles, toys, whatever. <laughs> I, I call them all the above. I unbox them because I have no They're family. action figures, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, 1985, Silver Centurion. So, Centurion. Uh, I love that one, man. Uh, I still have it to this day. It's it my first one I had. Uh, it's a Marvel Legends is, is what, what it was when the Marvel Legends uh, flying first came out. Uh, so, the, uh, in the comics, though, Silver Centurion – was when Tony actually fell off the uh, bandwagon and uh, Ro- Rhodey actually took over Iron Man for a couple of years. And when he actually, let's see, what was it? Rhodey, no, he wasn't killed on this one. But uh, anyways, Rhodey got hurt really bad or something like that. 
He was sick, and, I think. Yeah, yeah. He was like a rampage. And so his comeback was, uh, Tony Stark's comeback was with this suit. Uh, it can absorb a lot of energy, uh, and it had a force field that uh, it created, but it drained the power like like that, so it didn't last very long. But yeah, that, that's spot number five. Fantastic. Deontay. Uh, well, the Surface Centurion's awesome, actually. The, it, it, it was... It was the suit in the comics for a while there. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, didn't it make it to the big screen for the – it wasn't it one did. of the suits featured in Iron Man 3? Yeah, it was – no, Iron Man 1 and 2, actually. Uh, we get a clip of it in the background, but it's the, one, the red and silver one he is uh, in Iron Man 2. That, that is the MCU's version of it. That, whoa, that's awesome. Okay. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Deontay, what you got for number five? My number five is the Model 57 3FB, a.k.a. the Fing Fang Foom Buster, which is uh, anybody that grew up on Gundam and Power Rangers, you would know he, that he becomes a Megazord, basically, and beats the crap out of uh, <laughs> Fing Fang Foom. And that's actually one of my favorite Marvel villains uh besides mandarin and uh watching that fight even though he lost and he didn't bust anything uh that that, that was a great fight to watch and um see seeing him having to eject from that and never use that suit again kind of broke my heart but that, 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 that was pretty awesome for me to watch dude if you're gonna fight a kaiju you gotta do it in a giant robot <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Uh, Tommy, what you got as your number five? Uh, was that the one I said Hulkbuster? I think it was the Hulkbuster one. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. I was pretty sure it was the you, Hulkbuster arm. You know what? Even, if, you, so. if you just ask Landon, he'll even queue him up for you. Oh, thank you. All right. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I would say the Hulkbuster armor. Like, yeah. it, it was just – I like the idea that Tony has to build something in order to take on – you know, bigger enemies, kind of like how he he said the Fing Fang Poom Buster. You know, you have the Hulk Buster, and I, I just like how simplistic it kind of looks. It's not overly complicated, but it gets the job done as to what we want to see. And I, I, I I've always liked the design. I especially like the design that we end up seeing in the movie, where it's kind of like the more circular head, and it's kind of more flat down, and it, it almost looks like a tank. And that's what I like yeah. about it. it, it and it almost, I don't know, it, it has like, like he said, like almost Transformer-esque vibes as the Fin Fang Foom one did. Just yeah. the overwhelming size of it and the idea that it could just come in and just screw things up, you know. Well, I, I, I like the... Juggernaut is a really cool design. So then Absolutely. Seeing it in, in, <laughs> oh, yeah. Iron Man's armor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the Hulkbuster in the MCU when that fist goes, boo, 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 boo. Good night, 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 night. <laughs> but I, I feel like that was a perfect time to do it since I actually got the Hulk's face right up here. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, I did love in, uh, in Infinity War whenever they swapped Hulk out for Bruce in the Hulkbuster armor. That was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, man, that, that was hilarious. pretty good too. I thought yeah. that was funny. Heather, what do we have in chat? Uh... Taylor Burton's number five is the Mach 1 armor. Oh, yeah. What he did in that cave and how he got out of there was incredible. <laughs> Very true. Tony Stark did it in a cave with a box, with a box of scraps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kampachi's number five is also the Mach 1 armor, the armor that he made first to the escape the terrorists. Let's see. That arm <laughs> missile that came off. Yeah. And <laughs> That's Tom Morello just gets a face full of missile in that uh in that scene. So hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy Rhodes number five is the cold iron armor, Ooh. actually made out of iron and used to fight elves because it was poisonous to them. It has claws <laughs> and probably other cool stuff too. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, and that's a that's a common like thing to fight off fey creatures is to use uh, black metal. So metal. <laughs> Space boys number five is model six, the Ooh. hydro suit. I like it because he has little web feet. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. a deep diving swimming suit. You know, whenever when Iron Man says he's got a swimsuit, it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> just an iron speedo 
<laughs> now check me out, Namor. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's nanotech, so when he, he can operate it, it just it comes off. <laughs> okay. I just I just thought of this now. But I do need Iron Man in a in a red speedo with repulsors on his ankles. Ooh. Making fun of Namor. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks number five is the Hulkbuster. Yes. Yeah, the yes. Hulkbuster, dude. For one. all the reasons we've said before, and it's such a badass suit. It just mm -hmm. is. Ben Stewart's number five is Mach 50 Nanotech. MCU, the suit was up to nine. What? The suit at up was so, <laughs> nice. <laughs> was so nice. So nice. <laughs> Dude, yeah, the nanotech suit was incredible, uh, and and I know that like the the bleeding edge suit is coming up later on people's list, but the whole idea of that suit where he like stores the um, he just stores it in like his bones. The, well, no, not for the bleeding edge, but for the the nanotech suit, it's just in that like clothing he's wearing. It just comes out of it. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Yep. It is. You know, when we got Tony getting his arc reactor removed in Iron Man 3, I was like, great, this is going to be so stupid. What's he going to do to like, do with, <laughs> how's he going to do his arc reactors from now yeah, on? Right. And it's like, uh, he just slimmed it down and just like fits on everything. It's fine. He just, everything's got an arc reactor now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're embarrassing me in front of the wizard. Is that everything in chat? <laughs> My number five comes from um, Iron Man Disassembled, uh, number four. Um, and it wasn't actually ever in the comic book pages. It was just a cover art. Uh, but it is the Deadpool armor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but the one thing I couldn't imagine being worse than Deadpool in his normal costume <laughs> is Deadpool in an Iron Man costume. <laughs> and I love the way it looks. Oh, um, and, and I'm 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 a little sad that we never got it uh, on a comic page because uh, I I would love to see Deadpool just trying to even figure out how to work Iron Man armor and how funny <laughs> that would be. Um, like in the uh, the. Uh, uh, Thor crossover that they did where he got a magic hammer, but it wasn't a magic hammer. It was just a sledgehammer and he'd like written something on it and he was like whacking people in the head with it. Just, I love Deadpool. <laughs> That's great. Blake, you're number four. Man, we didn't get to see a lot of this, uh, but the Iron Patriot in MCU, yeah. I just, I just want to be for it to be just, you know, American style war machine, pretty much what it is painted up war machine. Uh, I don't know. I really love like the, the design and the color of it. Uh, I thought it looked sick. I would have loved to see that suit a little bit more like in some action. Uh, instead of him just kind of flying through and landing in it and they took it off and, you know, <laughs> did, uh, did upgrades to it that they wanted. But uh, yeah, I would have loved to see some of that in action just because I feel like it's just a really well done paint job and it's just pretty much a war machine with a different paint job. So. So Tommy's probably pretty familiar with this, but that's the that's actually the armor from the comics that Norman Osborn wore after mm -hmm. he took over Shield. Yeah, um, that was the uh, Dark Avengers, right? The, in the Dark Avengers run, the Iron mm -hmm. Patriot is what he called himself. He basically replaced Captain America and Iron Man with one costume. Um, and I do remember when Tony came back, he was making fun of him because he had changed <laughs> the arc reactor to a star. And he's like, he's like, yes, who cares? What does that matter? And he's like, well, whenever you did that, you weakened the strength of it, unlike mine. And then he's like, blah, just, <laughs> shh, and just goes flying. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Uh, Deontay, your number four. My number four is the Model 22 Thor Buster. Or um, I didn't put God Killer, but. Or, or did I? Yeah, I, you, you did. did. that change them out? Oh, did you? I remember, I I remember seeing God Killer being on your uh, list. This is the one with the six images yeah. together. Yeah, I, I know there was going to be a swap out, so one of us didn't do the same one, but I don't know if, if that was mine. Um, but It's okay. Just talk about yeah. it. We don't need the uh, picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the, the Thor Buster for now. Uh, and... That was pretty much when he was able to use the Asgardian crystal to power up his suit. And of course, the busters don't always bust uh, who they're who they're named after. But 
uh, watching him fight Thor, being able to hang with him. Thor was pissed because he trusted him with that uh, crystal. Yeah. He was like, you made this into a weapon against me. Oh, okay. I see how it is. And <laughs> <laughs> it is just like round whatever between them two Tony going Stark at it. wouldn't again. do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come on, contingency man. <laughs> That's very similar to uh, Batman taking down, uh, having plans Superman. for taking down the entire Justice League. And then Ra's al-, Ra's al Ghul getting hold of them and then putting out Batman's plan. And then everybody's like, everybody's like, He's defeating us. How is he doing this? And he's like, uh, I, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, has, he has good contingencies for the rest of the Marvel heroes, but I think T'Challa's contingencies are way better. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Tommy, what's your number four? I believe it is the space suit. And I, uh, Think it is the spacesuit. I, I want to say that it's the original one that's from the comics oh, that he first appears in. Is it War Machine? Oh, okay. <laughs> it was one of the two. I couldn't remember. Spacesuit, your number three. I do like the War Machine armor a lot. I like how Tony Stark was the original one that wore it. I like that it was. I like. I especially like how they uh, they set up the comics when he first appeared, where it was a. Uh, it would have the Iron Man logo. And then it would have War Machine kind of like painted over yeah. it or kind of over it to make it something different. It, it, it was something that was eye catching. And I like that it sets up the story for Rhodes to take over as War Machine. Because I think by the fourth time we see the War Machine outfit, Rhodes takes over, but he still calls himself Iron Man. So I like the original War Machine look. And I like that first cover that you see where it's just all black and silver and it's got war machine painted on top and you see just iron man dressed up and i, I think that that was one introduction comic book wise that i think is just brilliant it really is eye-catching yeah. and i love the way that it just all melts together and then what we see in the movies with the uh, roads I, I i enjoy any time that he's on i enjoy whenever i would say oh which movie was it when he uh, gets shot out of the sky? Was it in Civil War? That's uh, yeah, in Civil War. Yeah, yeah, when he's in Civil War. No, you're right, and, in Civil War. Yeah. And then I like seeing him kind of bounce back, too. So, like, it, it's a little mix of, you know, liking the Rhodes character while also liking the original, you know, suit with uh, Tony Stark wearing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that whole, like, there was a real, like, Shaft vibe, vibe for, like, Luke Cage and War Machine around that era. Um, mm-hmm. in Marvel Comics where they were like um, sticking it to the man, you know, was <laughs> right. kind of their like their vibe. <laughs> and so the like war machine being painted over the Iron Man logo was kind of part of that that whole attitude and, and I always loved that. So yeah, definitely. Uh Landon, what do we have in chat? Ben Stewart's number four is the model thirty seven iron destroyer. Ooh. Yeah. Uh that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many out there, like without a picture, like it's so hard to remember. It's what, true. What some it's of true. these are. Uh, I will look it up while we move on to the next one. <laughs> Let this be known, chat. You can just make up models. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Kenpachi Zaraki's number four is. Model 29 Extremis armor. Yes. Stark could store an advanced liquid metal skin within his body. Iron Man's new suit of armor was faster, stronger, and linked directly to his neural pathways, becoming mm. one of his most advanced armors. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that's the it's the uh, Asgardian armor. <laughs> oh, Vince, oh, Vince was the destroyer armor. He did. He did. He's right. He sent a picture of it. Yeah, so you know the destroyer from the first Thor movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's that. Yeah, he, yeah, he fought at yeah. the end. Oh, okay. Iron, Iron Man made a set of armor out of that thing. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's next? Oh, Taylor Burton's number four is MCU Mark III. First time we got to see the red and gold hits you right in the nostalgia MCU feels. Long before Disney, I was there, Gandalf, 3,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Billy Rhodes, number four, is the Stealth Suit. There's more than one model, but it doesn't have weapons, and it's pure stealth. I respect that level of dedication to covert ops. It's a good suit. It's all black, too, um, which is really nice. cool. Uh, and I remember there was an Iron Man game that came out for, like, phones. It's uh, not unlike Subway Surfers. Um, but um, you got to play in all the different armors, and I think that was my favorite armor. Oh. Heck yeah. <laughs> Brooke uh, Crankles, number four, is the Iron Spider. Yeah. That's a great one. That's I mean, one. that's why it's right here. No, yeah. like the real one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, for, so for our audio-only listeners, Blake has the Iron Spider from the MCU tattooed on his Oh, yeah. Arm. I forgot about audio-only, <laughs> but uh, I was making a joke that the comic book version uh, yeah. is better, which had, in, in that it's not. It's They're both very cool. <laughs> and Space Boys number four is the Model 67. I like gears. They are fun. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I uh, will be talking about that armor as well here in a bit. <laughs> Ooh. And I think that's it from chat. Fantastic. My number four is the Ultimate Iron Man. Now, don't get this confused with the Ultimate Comics Iron Man. This is from the Marvel Mangaverse and very similar to the Fin Fang Foom Buster. This is a uh, giant robot suit. Yeah, very where, similar. Wow. So there was a comic <laughs> story in the Marvel Mangaverse called Avengers Assembled. And just like the Power Rangers, each of the Avengers had a robot that they used for their uh, to fight in. And that's where their powers came from. And then they assembled it to, into the ultimate Iron Man, which was their Megazord. Um, and it's it's just fun. Uh, the Marvel Mangaverse was just fun in general. That's where you got Ninja Spider-Man. Uh, that's where you got a story. Wolverine has laser claws instead of metal claws. And Cyclops is his brother, and he cut his eyeball out. Like, geez. <laughs> this is insane. Pretty extreme. Yeah. Mangaverse is fun. I enjoy it. Uh, nice. But yeah. Uh, Blake, your number three, please. Uh, number three, as uh, Billy Rose said a while ago, the Model 45 Code Iron. Uh, made of actual iron, this suit is. Has iron blades, and the blades look sick. There's like two of them on each arm. Uh, literally uh, has a cannon uh, on the back. Uh, fires iron-based projectiles. So Ooh. it's just a badass-looking suit. <sighs> yeah, dude. And uh, I imagine it... Uh, uh, well, I want to say I imagine it's really heavy, but I imagine all the Iron Man suits are really heavy. Yeah. But <laughs> it's it's just really cool. It's really cool-looking. It is. It, it gives me a Wolverine vibe. It, that's kind of why I like it, to yeah, be honest. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Deontay, your number three, please. My number three is the Mark 45 Deep Space Armor. It's, I think it's Mark 45, because we've already had a Model 45 on the list. So uh, I love the designs. Uh, it's a new take on like the red and gold, especially like the helmet air. Oh, oh wow. my God. Look at that. Wow. Yes. That mm, is awesome, mm, actually. I've never having, seen that. I'm having a start gasm. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this armor is from when Tony became a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, he flew into space and he happened to run into them, you know, because space is so small. He just happened to fly <laughs> in the right direction to run into the Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, he joined the team. And that's where you get that story where he and Gamora hook up. Oh, and uh, his tiny human body could not handle <laughs> the, the power of Gamora. <laughs> That helmet's sick looking though. It, yeah, is. it is for real. It's terrifying in, in, in some aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. It's almost got like a, a little like Spider Man, but like just comes up, or uh, Grendel. Ah, yeah. the Grendel comics. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, Tommy, what you got for number three? I'm pretty sure this one was the spacesuit. You're correct. I think this one was the, so, I don't know. It's just something about that that it looks like the original suit, and it's just missing the mouth. That, that, that's all it really, really is. It's just the regular suit and then, like, you know, some packs for oxygen and things like that. But overall, it's it's his classic suit, just missing the mouthpiece. And I, I think that that's, it's really simplistic how they can change something and it makes Iron Man look completely different. Absolutely. Like, without the mouth, it just looks like a completely different character it could be. So I, I enjoy 
just the aesthetic look of it. I, I haven't read any stories with it in it. It's just the way that it looks to me is interesting and it's something that's out there. You know, it, it, and I would have also said that the Guardian's suit as well would be up there at about the same level to me. I think that both of them are brilliant. I, I like any time that Tony Stark goes into space. I, I love the Guardian. Am I wrong? Is that not the Guardian suit? No, the, so. no the original suit was just it was kind of his uh actually i got it right here Let's look, see. At this. look at this guy oh man oh that's oh, okay. oh that's completely okay. different oh yeah okay okay but it's just missing the mouth that's all that's that's the big difference that it is it's just missing the mouthpiece but it looks completely different i i like it aesthetically it's almost the same as the silver centurion it's just the aesthetic look of and they, it. Took, oh, okay. they took the mouth off because you can't breathe oxygen in space that's why they did exactly that. yeah nice. <laughs> and also nobody can hear you scream <laughs> <laughs> fantastic heather what do we have in chat <laughs> Kampachi's number three is Model 38 Phoenix Killer Armor. This new oh. suit featured a chest-mounted disruptor Tony Hope would kill the Phoenix, but instead divided the cosmic entity, allowing it to possess five Marvel characters with the Phoenix Force. The Phoenix Killer Armor did not survive the mission. <laughs> Jesus, Tony. <laughs> yeah, that's how uh, you got the Phoenix Force 5. It was uh, Cyclops. Uh, Magic. <laughs> Magic. Was on the team. Uh, Colossus, uh, um, Emma Frost, and who was the fifth one? Cyclops, Nightcrawler. didn't he? Was uh, it Beast or Nightcrawler? Cyclops, Cyclops, Cyclops didn't he? Yeah, that, that was Danny named him first. But, yeah, Cyclops, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember who the fifth one was. Uh, I don't I know. think it was Beast. Yeah, <laughs> no. uh, I want to say Nightcrawler. For yeah, you mentioned Emma Frost. We can get mm -hmm. up on a tangent all day long for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ben Stewart's number three is the Model 11 oh, War Machine. Magneto. Duh, dumbass. Oh. oh. No, oh, I, I take that back. Okay, I'm done interrupting you, Heather. <laughs> but it was, it was Namor. It's Namor. Cyclops, Emma Frost, Magic, and Colossus. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> ben Stewart's number three, Model 11 War Machine. Taylor Burton's number three is the MCU Mark 41, the Bone Skeleton Suit. It looks so cool, basically like they're a deep space suit. If you haven't seen it, go take a look. MCU, uh, dead space skeletons. Yeah, cro uh, MCU. Is he talking about the only thing that was bones that had a mask was like crossbones? Wasn't it? I'm looking That's, it up. But... Is he think? Is he thinking about crossbones or no? Um, I'm not sure. That's the first thing that came to my mind. That's the first image I got. Was like yeah. the, the mask with the skeleton on it was crossbones in uh, uh, Civil War. Is it? Unless he's talking about Iron Man 3, because there were so many suits. It's one of them from out. Iron Man 3. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they yeah, I'm, I'm going to look that up. Of it. Um, so it's it's epic looking, and it has no, none of the plates covering any of the electronics. It's just <laughs> black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, gum it. Dad, gum it. <laughs> Billy Rhodes, number three. This may be the extremist armor, but it was from Superior Iron Man. It was liquid metal and either inspired by or made with a symbiote. I can't remember. Huh. That sounds uh, like that one that y'all talked about earlier. Yeah, Yeah, that was, that was that all white suit that he had. And he, I don't think he had a, a face mask most of the time. It was kind of like a like a headband kind of thing <laughs> that was going around the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks he's number three is venomized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was it? Maximum. It wasn't maximum carnage, but no, what was the story? King, where and black. This... King and black. Yeah. When everybody got yeah. uh, symbiotized. Yeah, dude, that, that armor is awesome too. 
Space Boys number three is Iron Man Mach 51, Victor Von Doom's armor. Yeah. You know, that's a badass armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that an Iron Man suit with actually like a cloak to it or something, I believe. Because don't that Iron um, Man suit have it wear like a cloak or something, I believe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay. he wears his, his Doom cloak. Yeah. For sure. Do- My number box. three um, comes from the period where Wolverine was dead. Um, in the comics, uh, it is X-23's Iron Man suit uh, from Wolverine Adamantium Agenda. And I don't really think that it changed function over what uh, X-23 normally does. Uh, it still had the claws. The only difference is she could fly. Uh, but just look at it, man. That is such a cool suit. That is mm-hmm. cool. I love that. Yeah. And she can still pop the claws. And, you know, she only has two claws, so still very similar to the um, cold iron suit. You know? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, me and you had the we had that same brain. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, what what comic series was that in that you just said? That is from Wolverine Adamantium Agenda. Um, it's a story where they think they're selling Wolverine's DNA on the black market, um, and so they break into this thing and like try to stop them, and they end up taking out a bunch of uh, enemies. And in the end, they find Wolverine and save him from Mister Sinister. It's a whole thing, um, but it's a good story. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, my number or Blake, why don't you give us your number two? Why don't uh, you drop nope. that number two on us? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Splat. Yeah, I can't give us the deuce now. <laughs> Blake, give us the deuce. <laughs> uh so this actually is, is something in the comics, but this isn't even what attracted me. It's actually the a fan art of John Berthal in the Punisher Iron Man suit. Uh, and that's why that's why I chose this picture because, uh, man, we deserve to see this in live cinema. Give it to us in Armor Wars. Bring John Berto in there. Let him have a War Machine suit and paint yes. his skull on it. I want to see oh that. Oh my god! Uh, but oh if you my- want to, if you want to go back to the comics uh, origin of the Punisher Iron Man suit, War Machine was killed by Thanos, and uh, the Punisher claimed the War Machine suit, and he did up the artwork on it and took over. And so that's the kind of comic run of how that suit became. Nice. Yeah. And isn't it rumored that we're going to get it's the rumored John Bernthal Iron It's Punisher rumored Iron Man for yes. Armor Wars like that it's not even like a that's not even like a fan request like it's rumored that that's actually happening. Yeah, there there's it's like one of those not light rumor not a heavy rumor but it's like a 70% rumor that we're supposed to be getting one. And Armor Wars I think would be perfect. You know, let it be like a season finale, you know, the end, se- uh, end episode of a season or something like that, where they bring on some, you know, hero, some hero help or whatever, and then they just jump and find a whole bunch of different suits and let him find one, and he kind of marks it up with a skull on it or something. Like, man, that'd be sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would. Deontay, how about you give us your number two? My number two is a tie between Extremis and Bleeding Edge. So Bleeding Edge is basically the upgrade to Extremis. So a lot of people favor that over or or they favor Bleeding Edge. But I I, kind of love both. They're they're part of the coolest suit up in in all of Marvel. So Tony can basically think of suiting up and he suits up. So the nanotech is like neuro activated and I, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, every time I have like a fantasy to myself and I'm going to save like Walmart or something, I, I, I do like a neuro suit up of Tony Stark and I, I'm wearing bleeding edge when I'm running through like aisle three or something. So it's, <laughs> I, I, I love it. He's like the king of suit ups for me because yeah. of this suit. That's yes. a cool suit. It's a really cool suit. Tommy, what's your number two? Oh, mine has to be that silver centurion suit that, mm-hmm. uh, that Blake was talking about before. It's just, <laughs> I think that, like him, there's that nostalgic feel because there's a whole like set of time where he's just wearing the Silver Centurion suit in the comics, and it's. I think that it's the most eye-catching suit that I've ever seen, besides maybe the original. You know, because it was just so different from what we had seen from Iron Man before. You know, we were so used to the classic gold and red, and then all of a sudden it's now this silver and this kind of like a like a darker, deeper red that's that's not necessarily that bright red that we saw saw before. And it felt a little just different. It was just something that was so different that it sticks out in the mind that it it's something that is aesthetically appealing. And it, it like I said, it was just something that was new. It, it was innovative to me. 
seeing how like because you can only do so many stories with a man in an iron suit <laughs> but like to but to make it innovative and to make it fun again i think that that's what the silver centurion suit did is that it was something that was breaking the norm it was it was pushing the boundaries of what we had seen with iron man before and i like that the suit stuck around for a while it wasn't just yeah. like a one and done it was something that was a mainstay for a little bit and then you know we get back to the return to the classic golden red but the, the briefcase suit in iron man 2 was a uh, homage to the silver centurion right i think mm -hmm. i think so i think that was yeah. the one yeah mm -hmm. yeah because uh, that's that's the only scene that we actually got to get it was at the on he fought with it on the racetrack if I'm not mistaken yeah when he was fighting with Flash yeah yep. yeah it was a cool fight scene uh, mm -hmm. still don't understand how Whiplash got smashed into a, a metal fence yeah. with a car and just walked <laughs> away like it was nothing well when I you guess, make your work you can do that I guess <laughs> just having laser whips on your hands makes you impervious to being hit by an effing car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Heather, or who is it? Heather, Landon, Landon, what do we have in chat? <laughs> Ken Pachi's number two is Model 50 Endo Sim Armor. The mm -hmm. Endo Sim Armor was a symbiote suit, psionically bonded with Tony, that he could summon mentally, merging with it at will. It was based on symbiotes. It could change size and mass, had repulsors capable of hurting beings who can absorb energy, and is shielded from psionic attacks. Yes. Very nice. That's a Thank really yeah. good suit, oh, yeah. too. Really powerful suit. What color was it? It was like a chrome, kind of platinum-ish color. It was oh. beautiful. It, it's from head to toe. Let me see. Model 50? Yeah. You can get, carry on. All right. Ben Stewart's number two is Extremis Symbiote Armor King in Black. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool suit. Um, he's he's basically like venomized, um, and and kind of has the Iron Man armor hanging like half out. Mm -hmm. So this suit, I believe this is the one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is kind of what you were talking about, right, Tommy? Let me move this in front of the camera. Yes. Yeah. I think so. That's that's the I one that it. I think I was talking about because it has the blue that kind of mixes in with the white. Yeah, so that's the model 50 that Kampachi was talking about. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Space Boys number 2 is model 39. Oh yeah, so this one's really cool. It was a suit that Tony made for uh for Rhodey. So he Tony had faked his death and he couldn't or he couldn't be Iron Man anymore. So he made this suit and gave it to Rhodey and it is um actually had a image of it up um so this is what it looks like it's a really tech-based suit it has all the regular um iron man abilities uh gold helmet oh, wow. it, it almost looks like it's from tron uh gold, yeah, it does. gold hands right. <laughs> um and then it could also shoot out an ice blast that would lock people in place uh with where they were uh so it's pretty cool armor and it technically i guess it'd be a war machine armor because roadie was one wearing it but it was still an Iron Man armor. Mm. Is uh, yeah, carry on. Taylor Burton's number two is Thor Buster, previously mentioned. Oh yeah. yeah. So we didn't get an image of that one, so I'm gonna look it up real quick uh, while we move on to the next one. All right. got, there was one of him getting uppercut in the Discord. Hold on, wait. I might actually. I got it. Just. That's the one there you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, there you go. What a so beauty. That's the Thorbuster armor. Nice. He's jacked. Yeah, he's definitely the jacked. armor's jacked for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Billy Rhodes, number two, is I'll say the Iron Man suit that was drawn with a nose because it looks very goofy. Okay, I have to see this. I have to see this. <laughs> uh, I don't know which model that would be. You probably almost do Iron Man suit with a nose. I guarantee looking, you. That's what I'm. That's what I'm <laughs> There's got to be only one. There's got to be. Because they probably did it, and then later on they're like, "What the hell were we thinking?" Oh my god! And I know exactly what he's talking about now. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. I don't like why. Oh, my ring light's <laughs> effing it up. Huh. 
So nice. can you see he's got a a nose on there? There, hold on, hold on tight, everyone, for two seconds. Here we go. This is the. <laughs> that image gives you a good idea. How it just doesn't even have an Iron Man feel with the nose. So you wouldn't think something that small would make a big difference, but it really does. Oh, here's There's a, a whole one. facial expression now. Let's get a side view look. <laughs> oh, God. It gets worse. It gets worse. Oh, man. He, he's constipated in that picture for sure. You think, yeah. we spent enough, you think we spent enough time on this one? <laughs> oh, all right. uh, and with that, Brooke Crankles, number two, is since Doctor Doom is in the MCU and fights Iron Man, I propose my number two to be the Doctor Doom MF Doom crossover suit. Mm. Need a mad villainy comic Rip MF Doom. Yeah, uh, F in the chat for MF Doom for sure. Uh, and uh, dude, yeah, a, an MF Doom uh, Iron Man crossover suit would be incredible. Uh, that's all of uh, chat. <laughs> My number two uh, comes from the futuristic world of Iron Man 2020. Uh, Tony Stark's dead, but his brother Arno Stark has taken up the cause as Iron Man, and he has this sweet, sweet Iron Man suit with giant gears on it. So, is the Iron Man is Arno Stark's Iron Man 2020? Yeah, you got a picture of that? We do, we have a picture. Uh, yeah. Landon's figuring his life out. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, check wow. that out! Oh, yeah, that's the last one with the gears they talked about earlier. Big gears on his shoulders now, t in, in the 616. Huh. Tony then went on to make this suit um, later, but this is actually from like a, a, a multiverse story where Tony's not Iron Man anymore. Um, now, obviously, tw the future of 2020 at that time uh, is now three years ago, um, <laughs> and Arno Stark is you know, it, is a, a, a main character in the Iron Man comics now. So having those gear shoulder pads don't seem very functional. I feel like if he shrugged his shoulders too hard, they'd hit hit his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well actually i think they don't move oh so i think that the arms move inside of it uh, so i guess maybe just like swinging your I head mean, around the suit looks sick though you right. know what it's like though mm -hmm. you know like the weight like really big weightlifters who can't like touch the side of their head <laughs> yeah you know he couldn't do yeah, that yeah. he would just take the gear <laughs> uh blake are you ready i am to give us your number one. <laughs> Blake, you're number one, please. You're talking about start gasm. That's a ear gasm right there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, hear so that Modi hit? Yeah, oh, well, man. I'm not gonna lie. When he first started off, I thought he was gonna sing it. It sounded like he started <laughs> to sing number one. He hit that vibrato. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, number one is the MCU uh, Mark 85, the final suit, the most advanced and powerful suit Tony Stark has created. Man, I had to get a picture to where when we sit there and uh, you know he gets those arms up. I, I love that with the that powers up. Thor powers oh. up with his lightning, and then boom, you get those beams. Ooh all over Thanos. Like, that is just such a badass, powerful suit. Uh, but to date, that's supposed to be his most advanced and powerful suit in the MCU he had created. So, yeah, I, I freaking love that suit. And that the uh, fight scenes with that suit and everything he did with it was just phenomenal. He's like, did you just throw the moon at me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so that whole fight, you know, the, uh, the, the Iron Man, Thor, Captain America fight. Yes. Uh, and Tony just brings it, man. That yeah. whole fight. For sure. Oh, yeah. So good. Deontay, what you got for your number one? My number one is the Model 13 Hulkbuster. So this is the Mark II that we also saw in Avengers um, Age of Ultron. Uh, you get to see him wailing on the Hulk. And then, of course, he doesn't bust anything, like uh, unlike his names, naming convention. But... Uh, watching him tank damage from Hulk and then able to throw a punch back and slug him up real good. That, that I love that suit and uh, 
and watching him go at it with Hulk will be a classic fight for the rest of my life for me. Very nice. Dude, getting to see that on screen was incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. And the fact that they did the storyline where um, somebody made Hulk um, angry and think that the Avengers were the villains and then they got to fight. Now in the comics, it was Loki. Uh, but in this instance, it was Scarlet Witch. But just that whole fight between the two of them, it was so epic. Uh, I would go on a, a out on a limb and say that that fight between Iron Man and Hulk is better than the Zod, Superman, Man of Steel fight. Um, it, it, in scale and, and in damage and uh, in the quality of the fight, for sure. I agree with that, for sure. And I love on screen, too, like how, like, you know, he grabbed the Hulk's hand and mm -hmm. then just kind of cased up over him. Like, that That was pretty sick. That was cold. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tommy, what you got for number one? Oh, for my number one, I got to go with the Model 1, Mark 1 and 2. It would have to be... Tales of Suspense number 39, that first time that we ever see Iron Man. And it's just the all silver suit. He's very bulky. It's not really defined. There's there's no refining to it. He's just there and it's just this big bulky suit that he has on him. And then I like the Mark II of the Model 1 because the Mark II is the gold version that we see whenever he joins the Avengers for the first time, that Avengers number one, where he's yeah. alongside, you know, Ant-Man hold Thor and um, eventually Captain America with that issue four. Is that kind of like a iron kilt he had on in that picture? It's a mini skirt. Oh. <laughs> a I was bit, just yeah. going to say, <laughs> one thing every Iron Man armor has missed since that armor is the mini skirt. Huh. Well, yeah. Got to have that motion, man. That's <laughs> how you're able to do it. You don't want to sweat. You don't want to sweat too much when you're fighting in battle in your never region. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. It's, it's this hot genius this. summer. Yeah, <laughs> we dealt with this in the first Iron Man movie, but I love stories where Tony has to go back to using his original armor. Um, mm. It's just so cool whenever he's just like got all of this technology and it gets turned against him and he turns around and grabs the old reliable original yes. gears and motors and, you know, repulsor powered without a lot of the tech. And he has to just find inventive ways to use that to defeat the, the, the modern tech. And every single time he's proved that that first suit is still the best one. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Heather, what do we have in chat? Kampachi's number one is Model 70 Extreme Beot Armor. A little different from the last one, this armor had a symbiote attach itself, merging with it to create the Extreme Beot Armor. Tony's new bio-organic armor had additional abilities, including symbiotic tendrils, a corruption-removing repulsor beam, and a deadly dragon form. Hell yeah, oh, dude. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Huh. That's pretty awesome sound. Yeah. <laughs> if my options are turn into a dragon or don't turn into a dragon, I'm picking dragon. Turn into a dragon. <laughs> yeah. A dragon or a nighthawk, one of the two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yes, Absolutely. Ben Stewart's number one is infamous Iron Man, Dr. Doom. Hell yeah. So infamous Iron Man. Uh, I'm actually going to look up a picture of this because we kind of talked about it. Uh, but Doom as Iron Man, it's Doom, man. Absolutely. I thought Ben put, put a picture in Discord. He did, but it takes a whole thing to like download it into the computer and then upload it. And, uh, Ooh. So what else do we have, Heather? Space Boys number one is Model 36, baby. It looks like a brick house, and that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I think this action figure is a great representation of the infamous Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, my it's God. A, it's really cool. What, what was that? A Marvel Legend? Yep, that's a Marvel Legend. Nice. Billy Rhodes number one is the Bleeding Edge armor. Just because I want to know the physics of where the massive nanobots are stored in his body. <laughs> so I can actually answer this, and I'm sure I'm not the only one on the pod who can talk about this, but he keeps it in the hollows in his bones, um, and uh, that's where the nanobots stay inside of his inside of his bones. <sighs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. That's You're crazy. walking around and you just feel these bots inside your bones crawling up and down. Is that like, <laughs> they inhabit you? Oh, no. <laughs> it's enough to drive a man to drinking. Right, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um. <laughs> it all makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Burton's number one is nanotech, dude. Fourteen million six hundred and five scenarios to beat Thanos, and the only one that would work was with nanotech. <laughs> when you see it forming up his hand with the stones after he wrestled with Thanos right before, <laughs> I am Iron Man. Rip Tony and that era of the MCU. We love you three thousand. So oh, that's yeah. my... Bird, get out of here with all that. <laughs> I didn't come in here to feel things. <laughs> Brooks number one is Ironheart. Dude, yes. that's a great suit that too. Iron Heart armor that we got in the end of uh Wakanda Forever was so cool. Yeah. I cannot wait to see more of that on screen. For sure. It was beautiful. It was. And I like how it was enough change that she still had her unique look, you know. It wasn't it wasn't like too too close to the Iron Man suit, so I, I thought that was great. Yes. Yeah. Plus the heart too with that that was designed yeah. into the suit. I was like, okay, I like I like this. Yep. Oh yeah, Iron uh, Ken Pachi said uh, honorable mention for Iron Lad, which is uh, Kang, uh, a young mm-hmm. Nathaniel Richards <laughs> traveled back in time in a Silver Centurion style suit, and dude is so cool. Um, even that idea that it's Iron Man, but it's not Iron Man, you know? Yeah. Mm. Uh, my number one is the God Killer armor Mark II. Uh, so the Mark I uh, was uh, a suit that Tony didn't actually get to use um, because he was not the right brother. It was actually designed for Arno Stark, um, his brother, who has the you know gear shoulder pads. But this one, uh, Tony modified to use himself, um, and he used it to beat the shit out of some celestials. And I can't think of a better use for an Iron Man armor. Uh, yeah. so, that's how big it is. That he can go toe to toe with celestials. Uh, but the God Killer so, armor. So, like, how big is the inside of that? Like, is he like sitting up in the head like the Power Rangers? You know, yes. and, and guiding it. Is he really? Yes, he's oh, tiny, wow. tiny compared to it. Nice. Um, let me picture the MCU celestials. Right. So the armor is that big. Man, get. Okay. Because he would be like an ant inside that suit then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And the weirdest thing is he designed it so he has to run all the way to one arm to move it and then run back to the other arm to move it and then down the ladder to move one leg. I'm just making that up. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what? No, this I'm just story is not up. sounding so cool now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just making that up. Could you imagine? Hang I on. Can. Another punch from the left side. <laughs> give me give me an hour. <laughs> Time out. Time he out. Get, he gets two punches and a kick. He's like, whew. I don't know about this, man. <laughs> uh, so nice. our uh, it has the nose, Danny. Thank you, Ken Pachi. Um, uh, for next week, our top five is going to be top five sci-fi or fantasy series. Uh, this can be television series, movie series, uh, book series, uh, nice. video game series, any like any this. media that you want to take it from, comic book series even um but yeah so that would be our top five for next week and this has been our top five for this week you're doing great (laughs) welcome back to the show uh guys this uh it has been incredible having you on the show tommy you are a welcome oh yeah I, I enjoy being here. I like talking about all this nerd stuff, man. It is it's some of the best stuff to absolutely to end your day with, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything going on right now you want to talk about? Oh man, just let me see. I know that there's a couple things in the comics world that are about to be happening. I know you guys were talking about Star Wars earlier with the Dark Empire thing. There's actually going to be a uh I don't know if it's going to be a crossover event, but there's a dark droids comic event that's going to be happening for marvel that's supposed to take place during the time right after return of the jedi i believe so oh. it's supposed to be like young luke and we're supposed to be seeing this like virus that's going through the droids that is affecting them and changing their uh their wiring or whatever and i think it's a pretty interesting concept and uh outside of that you know i'm trying to 
keep up with this X-Men stuff with the uh, the fall of X that's about to happen. We're finally yeah. going to see the very end of all this stuff that Hickman began with uh, the Krakoan age. And I, I wonder where we're going to move forward after this. I think this is going to be the last bit of X-Men I'm going to get. And then I know Daredevil is about to end, but start over again with a new number one in September. So it's just a lot of stuff happening in the comic book world. I mean, we just, we just got a new Avengers number one that just began and the whole dawn of DC that's happening right now with all the DC titles getting new number ones. Uh, I think that Cyborg came out today. I think that Titans came out today. I think that uh, Catwoman is still continuing with the dawn of the DC stuff. And it's just the, there's a lot going on, I think. And, you know, there's a plenty happening with the independent stuff. I mean, we have Junk Rabbit going on right now, which is supposed to be kind of like a Swamp Thing-esque story. But instead of it being uh, the Swamp and it being the green, it's mechanical and it's with uh, junkyard scraps and things like that. So I think it, there's mm. there's a lot of interesting stuff that's going on right now. Mm. I tell you, my cousin Jonathan really knows how to write comics. He's like, <laughs> yeah. your cousin Jonathan writing comics, and my aunt Martha showing up on the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. <laughs> Bombshell. <laughs> so, uh, Deontay, you guys got anything going on in the Saturday ner- Saturday Night Nerd side of things right now? We sure do. So this Saturday uh, at 6 p.m. Central, we have a celebrity special guest, and that is jason page so if you guys are familiar with the og pokemon theme song uh gotta catch them all uh you will be able to meet him for or at least see him on the podcast uh this saturday and uh we have a game that we're gonna play so we could give away his uh, special prize autograph trading card oh nice. so, this is the game who is that awesome. pokemon <laughs> it's jason <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty awesome guest to have <laughs> yeah yes. our very first celebrity man i'm pretty excited about it i'm um, hell yeah dude I'm excited you, man. Heck yeah. absolutely man you guys are more than welcome to try your luck and get this trading card and then if you want to sing with us you you're more than welcome to so it's going to be a live concert you no know, i do like to sing danny's good <laughs> he he's not good he's great actually he's <laughs> singing no i'm being serious like he's great so Blake, you guys got mm-hmm. anything? Or you guys, we got anything going on on the uh, Cape events and comic thing client side? Uh, our next thing is our Cowboys and Camping show. Uh, it's an outdoor show, but it's not just an outdoor show. It's an outdoor experience. Uh, we're bringing live music for two days. We're bringing Corey J. Smith, who plays Lloyd in Yellowstone. He's going to be doing meet and greets, autographs, and pictures uh, with everybody for two days. Uh, it's going to be great. We've got food trucks, uh, some alcohol vendors, cornhole tournament, kids area. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Anything to do with outdoor stuff, farm and ranch. It's going to be a whole experience shebang, but it's going to be great. Super excited for it. And then uh, after that, we're going to Chicago uh, Fan Expo, and we are setting up there for what three days? Is it two days? Yep, yep it's three a days. Four day event. Is it cool? So it's Thursday, know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There. Yeah, I don't know if we're planning to be there all four, but it's four days. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's next on the list. And then uh, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st, we have our Comic-Con uh, this fall. So stay yeah. tuned for that for announcements and celebrities and vendors and stuff we'll be focused on here in the near soon future on our socials. And I would like to just humbly ask um, all of the people at the at Marvel Studios to please – Taking into consideration that Taylor Burton is having a child, and that child needs to see Beta Ray Bill on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Not messing around with our emotions and just give it to us. Um, and from all of us here at Comic Man Client, catch you guys later. <laughs>